So then that asks the question, what is ethical hacking? So ethical hacking, here's a great definition. It involves the use of hacking methods and concepts technically, as well as tools to discover weaknesses for security systems. So as I mentioned before, an ethical hacker is one who is designed to think like an attacker or like a criminal profiler. You should be thinking, how would they try to get in to do things like steal passwords or usernames or, you know, what would they be doing to look at vulnerabilities? Now, not all attacks come from the digital side of our infrastructure. Sometimes it's done through physical, which we'll talk about when it comes to things like social engineering. We'll also talk about something called dumpster diving. And it's not something I do at lunchtime. Hmm, but maybe I should. No, I'm kidding. Now, typically ethical hackers are going to be contracted or they may actually be employed directly by the company itself to periodically go through and test the security of your infrastructure or of the infrastructure. Again, they're going to use the same tactics that hackers use, but the big difference is that they're going to have the permission and that gets us into talking about what is it that an ethical hacker or what skills an ethical hacker should have. Well, one of the skills that you should have is obviously you should be an expert with programs and networks. You should truly understand how TCP IP works, even down to the binary level. Here's a great question for you. Do you know what the ANDing process is? That's capital A-N-D-I-N-G. Go look it up. It's an interesting concept. It's the process that a computer goes through to determine if its destination is local or remote, if it needs to go through a router, or if it can just do a broadcast. That's the level that you need to have. As far as programs are concerned, I'm not saying that you need to be an expert in QuickBooks and an expert in Photoshop, but you should understand how programs install, what modifications they make, i.e. the registry in the, in the Windows world, as well as what security issues they might actually create. You should also be proficient with what we refer to as vulnerability research. And we'll talk about this one a little bit later on. When it comes to vulnerability research, you should be trying to keep yourself aware of what's going on in the industry. Trust me, once a doctor becomes a doctor, he doesn't stop learning. He doesn't stop learning about the new technology, the new procedures. Same thing with an attorney. He doesn't stop learning. Same thing, I mean, let's take this all the way down to hairdressers. Hairdressers don't stop learning. It's the same concept here. You should be very proficient with finding out and being aware of new vulnerabilities that are coming out. You should also be someone who understands most of the hacking techniques being utilized because that's going to be your job is going out and trying some of these techniques on a particular target. And as I mentioned before, just knowing about the techniques doesn't mean that you truly understand them. There's always little tweaks that you can learn or that will actually come in handy instead of just reading about it. And they should be hacking techniques across the board. It shouldn't be vendor specific, meaning I'm not going to just learn Windows attacks because I might have, well, I guess maybe unless I have only Windows boxes in my environment, but then what about my routers? I need to find out different hacks that can be used against my routers. Even my IDS systems, I need to know what vulnerabilities. Yes, there are vulnerabilities in IDS systems. Trust me, the vendors come out with patches all the time. We also need to make sure that we adhere to a strict code of conduct. Now, I know I've harped on this one several times, but guess what? Yes, you're going to hear about it again. Now, remember, there's a fine line between an ethical hacker or an attacker. Typically, again, we separate it based off of intention. So as an ethical hacker, you have to agree to a very strict code of conduct. And as you remember, EC Council requires you to hold up that code of conduct. Some of the things that you agree to is private information is private. You are not allowed to go off and collect the information, give it, sell it, transfer it to another third party, or do anything without prior consent from the owner of that information. You also will make sure that you disclose to the appropriate people. This could be not only the owners of the company or your boss, but also possibly the authorities. And when I say the authorities, yes, I'm talking about the police. 
of any type of dangers to not only intellectual property, but also client information. It's a federal crime, folks, to steal information but it, that has been deemed private. In the words of a famous movie, that's all I'm going to say about that.